Hello and welcome to the run-up. My name is Nyamgul Agaji. Today we'll be looking at uh, uh, reactions from town hall meeting that was held recently and Tinubu's absence. And I'm talking about the uh, presidential uh, candidate for the All Progressives Congress. Meanwhile, uh, Tikwa Abubakar for PDP OB for Labour Party and Konkoso for NNPP attended. The presidential candidate of the All Progressives uh, Congress, Bola Tinobu, once again stayed away from the town hall meeting. Uh, this is organized for presidential candidates ahead of the 2023 elections on Sunday. Mr. Tinobu, through his presidential campaign council on Saturday, in a statement indicated that he wouldn't be attending any debate organized by the TV station whom he accused of being biased against him. In fact, in one statement, he said that the TV station or some people wanted to use him to make money so he would not attend. He also asked his supporters and spokespersons to boycott the TV station. However, like I said earlier, the three candidates are Tiko Abubakar of the People's Democratic Party, Peter Obi of the Labour Party, and Rabiu Kwankwaso of the New Nigeria People's Party were present. And right away, uh, we're going to uh, uh, let our guest in, uh, who is joining us right now, to discuss this uh, with us. We're talking with uh, Otumba um, Shegun Shoumi. He is a spokesperson for the Tiku Abubakar campaign and also the governorship candidate of Ogun State PDP. Welcome to the program, Otumba. Adjust that slightly. I'm spokesman for His Excellency Tiku Abubakar, that of the campaign. Okay, the not the campaign, just a spokesperson for Tiku Abubakar. Mm, yeah, yes. Okay, good. Uh, well, you can play the role in b both places because oh, wherever yeah, you, wherever yeah, you go. I want spokesman in 2019. I spoke that campaign to life. Okay. Uh, anyway, so let's go straight to to the to the point that we are trying to discuss right now. There was this uh, town hall meeting which uh, your principal attended, and uh, one other person, okay, the uh, candidate for the All Progressives Congress, did not attend. Uh, before we go into why and whether it is good or bad, uh, what are your takeaways from that discussion that was held on Sunday? It was in 1960 in America that the first televised presidential campaign of a debate of that nature took place. If I get my facts right, it was uh, Jeff Kennedy and Nixon. And it entered, you know, it ushered mankind into another era where a certain style had become, you know, the practice. Why do people even bother to attend? They bother to attend because they answer questions they become, they show that they are relatable. Sometimes they, you know, just be there in some kind of, I'm asking for a job, I'm willing to do a job interview and all that. So when aspirants are invited, it's never easy for any one of them because it doesn't matter the best of their preparation. They don't even know what kind of under the table, under the belly, you know, irritating, somewhat kind of question that can come, can be turned up. But they show up out of respect for the people they want to serve. When um, the, uh, the presidential candidate of the APC and his handlers started writing all sorts of funny press releases claiming that, oh, because they're so busy, they wouldn't know which one to attend, or that they're not going to even attend at all, or some people want to blackmail them, and all of those innuendos, you, at first, you try to empathize with them that could they be truly that busy, which I know that everybody is. But then when they now, you know, not willing to answer questions at home, begin to now go to a lot of locations abroad. Some of those locations with their fancy name, they're not any bigger or better than some of our own institutes here who can also organize debate if we desire. You then see that the dose of colonial mentality or the need for validation from Europeans may not be the best to reflect an African society that has been in existence for all of years. We may have had our issues with, you know, colonization and all of that, but now we're in a democracy. 
we must be able to begin to slowly but gradually put the signpost that we have become matured and that Africa, that by inference Nigeria, will find its way. What are my takeaways? I like the fact that they were civil among themselves. I like the fact that they answered the question as much as you know they could. I like the fact that it was not a quarrelsome environment where they were tearing at each other. And I like the fact that none of them was rude or coming across as too big. As a matter of fact, as I was not in the country where that debate was taking place, but I watched it online. As I watched that debate, I kept saying to myself, wow, Atiku, this is some kind of guy. Because by any stretch of imagination, given what he has done and how far he has been at it, in 1999, he was vice president. And as vice president in our country, that's number two. Every other person there, some of them were not even governors in 1999. The main rival, which is Bola Tinubu, was the first among 36. So if Atiku haven't been coming out all the time, dealing with these questions, answering them, can still find the will, the courage, the patience, and the candor to present himself again, you have to say that then nobody else has an excuse in, on the subject matter. Because you can't call a governor of a state a subject matter expert on the nation Nigeria in terms of governors. Reason being that as a governor of a state, you are managing mostly a diverse, similar set of people, now almost having the same ideology, you know, by a little bit. Maybe the only differentiation you have at the state is maybe religion. In some locations, the religion is almost even almost 100 percent or large percentage more religion. Okay. But when you are as the vice president of a country like Nigeria, you are going to be dealing with some policy decisions and some gray areas. That is not exactly wrong, it's just not well suited for the entire whole. And you know, you, what you do in the north, you may need to think out with it in the south. What you have to do in the south, you may need to think out with it somewhere else. You know what I'm saying? So I thought that Atiku was the one that was a subject matter expert, since he's been campaigning for president longer than any one of them. I thought that Atiku is the subject matter expert, since he's been involved in governance at that high level. And I didn't see why others should not come. So I he carried himself well. He tried to not be too, you know, grandiose in their midst. It could have been. Yeah, and he didn't want there, to be too, are, he didn't want to be boastful. Uh, uh, Otumba, there are, there are a lot of people who will argue. I, I know that Mr. Uh, Fumisho Baba Rinde is also standing by. But let, let me just chip in this. Uh, it depends on which side that you are standing. Uh, there are a lot of people mm. who would say that uh, posterity remembers of Basanjo, not Atiku, because no matter what you do, no matter how good you are, you are only as good as your principle that lets you become what you are. So if you're talking about mm. him being uh, the person who has been involved at the highest level of governance, uh, people will still say that he was playing second fiddle, no matter how we see it. But you have other mm. people, the Kwankwaso administration in his state, the Obi administration in his state, the Tinubu administration in his state, and these people were at the helm of affairs and took the decisions and were responsible for the good or the bad in their various states. Mm. So, um, why do you think it's very that? justifiable to say that Atiku Abubakar was the most highly placed? Okay, I'll tell you. Before you even got to them, Tinubu and Co, even trying to be governors, Atiku had been a presidential candidate in 1992. And one of the things you will realize when you're running for president is that the language, the diversity of the country is so different, and therefore you're a little bit more hemmed in. That was some experience they can't even share. Abiola was their leader. Atiku was a co-combatant with Abiola. That's some experience. When they went into opposition work to try and get us democracy, the vast majority of them, maybe minus Bola Tinubu, were busy, not even knowing what they were. Some of them were doing business. Atiku was there fighting opposition work. So he already understands the, the problem of exile, the management of governmental power, and the what it can do. That's experience they don't have. Then when they got to 1999, Atiku won the governorship election. So just like Bola Tinubu, he won. He was only lucky to have been called vice president. And by being vice president, he sits in a bigger vantage position to look at the country outside, not just one zone. So if some of them were governors, I'm not begrudging them that. We celebrate the little contribution they've had. But I tell you again, we have the office of a vice president in a manner in our country that also has some constitutional responsibility. 
those considered responsibility, for instance, in terms of the economy. I'm sure I'll be vice president today. If you have an opportunity of interviewing him, he will let you know there are some smart ideas that if they want to run it, by the time they bring it back to something that is as large as the Federal Executive Council with its diversity, then the peculiarity of areas will come in. The allocation of resources are much more stringent. The federal character rules are different. These are all balancing acts. The management of the armed forces is so oh, Forget it. I am not um, saying that others cannot you know, develop over time or merge, but I'm telling you very sincerely that the elephant, the big man in that room, the one that has the greater level of experience is this. I think I was a writing policy even for campaigns since 1992. By the time he goes to 1999, he wrote one. By the time he got to 2003, he wrote another. By the time he got to 2007, he wrote another. By the time he got to 1990, 2019, he wrote another. Now he has... So I'm trying to show you that this is not somebody who is just coming out on the first. It's like comparing Buhari with some other upcomers. Do you know how many times Buhari ran for president before he became president? All of these things create bigger level of understanding and empathy. I don't know if that analogy will be. I don't know if that analogy will be good enough uh, when you're using that's Buhari. The, that's the, the, the experience. The, the, no, no, no. The experience of Buhari while he was campaigning. Do you think uh, it has paid off that he's been well, there campaigning it, all this it time? It has. I'm not his spokesperson, but I can tell you that it has. It has. It has paid off in the sense that you see, when you have not taken on a job. You actually think that that job is easy. It's easy for you to sit down and just mouth, I'm going to take care of security. Do you even know how to control troops? Do you even know how to give an instruction to an air force? Do you even know the kinds of things they bring to a president or a vice president at that? Do you know the kind of issues that you have to contend with in a diplomatic environment, even just to buy weapons? Look, I'm not very spokesperson. I'm not in this party. I'm particularly in PDP. But I'm telling you, the totality of the experience. And besides, let me even add one other point to you. You learn more from failure than from success. Some of these things that these people who have been doing it for so long have gone through, they, it has deepened their knowledge. Nobody wants to be president of a country in Nigeria, a justice die in the South, without doing something, without calling people, without okay. meeting people, without building alliances. It is easy for someone who has not done anything close to that. No, I, I, we are going in an election here, and I believe that, okay, may the best man win. I think it should be article. Okay. But when we are done, then we are going to ask ourselves if it has not moved up till now. Okay. Can we uh, just for a second accept that? Is it that easy? You are having a lot of unemployment issues. You are thinking that there's one tunnel view, magic wand you are going to roll. It's not as simple as that. Okay. So okay. Let me. Let me. Us, we can even roll out some of the successes and some of the great contributions men like Atiku and Co. Has put it. Some of them to me have some contribution. Let me let me go to, uh, to let me go to Mr. Babarinde. He's also waiting. Um, well, he's the state coordinator at Tiku Support Organization, you know, Shun State. So let's just get to hear him too. Uh, what he feels about that uh, town hall meeting briefly, because uh, we've taken a lot of time uh, just introducing it. So, Mr. Uh, Fumiso Babarinde, um, welcome to the program. Uh, Th thank you and good morning. Yeah. So you watched the. Um, good morning, for sure. Good morning, Stone. SS, good morning, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. Okay. <laughs> now now we have made it a brotherhood now. Okay. <laughs> uh, well, you, you listened or you watched the, um, the town hall meeting. I asked him, I asked your colleague first before now, the, his takeaways from the. A town hall meeting. I'd like to have yours too, very briefly, before we go to other concerns. Yes. Um, As a Nigerian uh, now, let, anyway, let, 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 even let though you're PDP, yes. Let, let me start this way. Um, I like to talk back. Uh, what happened at that town hall meeting? I showed Nigerian that um, he is um, ready. That's one. Yeah, yeah we, we've, 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 we've established that. Sorry, we've established that from from uh, yeah. uh, uh, Otumba. But we want to talk about. Uh, I'm asking you as a Nigerian now, someone who's been there and no, we've no, seen no. it all. So I, I, all four yeah, of them. Yeah. How did? What was your takeaway from the entire interview? From the four of them, for all the for, from all of them that were present. Sorry, one, one. Let me give you an example of what he said. 
and that during that time of meeting, he said um, when he was vice president, he was in charge of local government's administration, and he was releasing money directly to the local government from the federal uh, account allocation until when the governors protested. What that implies is that he knows much more about administration and good governance from his experience. That's one. Number two, he talked about subsidy. One of the problems we have in this nation today is the administration of uh, the petroleum sector. He said um, the administration has been removing the subsidy. They are, they are doing it in phases, and probably they have done the second phase. You can imagine if that has continued. Today, we wouldn't be rolling the same cycle of fuel scarcity, of Q, and what have you. You understand? Now, Atiku Abaka has been consistent about devolution of power all the while, and he has taken this to the people. These are good takeaways. These are things that should attract uh, Nigerians to him as somebody who is ready okay. to take the nation forward. Okay, since are since you uh, since you're con concentrating on uh, talking about Atiku Abubakar and what you took away from that uh, town hall meeting uh, based on what he said, um, Nigerians also have concern. The closest person to Atiku Abubakar from 1999 to 2007 was the president that was his direct principal who has consistently said that Atikwa Bubaka is not good enough because he is very corrupt using his own words. So what's your defense now? What, tell, what gives you the confidence that when he comes, what the president that he served under said will not come to pass? Well, if you're, if you're, saying, if you're saying somebody is corrupt, I think PDP is one of the uh, is the party that laid foundations for anti-corruption agencies in Nigeria. For me, no court in the land. If you have any, please bring it forth. No court in the land has ever found Alaji Atikwaba guilty of any financial misappropriation or corruption charges. If there's any, please prove me wrong here on the uh, to Nigerians. He has served in the government, and as of today, I'm not aware that he has been charged or has been convicted for any offense that has to do with infractions while he's in the office or even as a private person, either by EFCC, ICPC, or by any Nigerian law court. If there's any, I may, I, may, I, may, I may not be aware. Please bring it on. And if that should be the case, Atiku Abaka, while vice president, is one, is one of the people that recruited one of the best hands for Obasanjo's era. He and on and he brought in technocrats who really made that government sick, who did, who performed excellently well. And some of them are still in public, yeah, even up to now. We have a former, we have a present governor. We have uh, somebody at the, at the World Bank. We have a lot of people there out there who, yeah, who has performed excellently well, even an African Development Bank, who was endorsed by Atiku while he was vice president. So, well, all other candidates did well. Kwaku Anso did well. Um, Peter Abu did well. Those, the, 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 those ones that have not even showed up in town hall meetings have one, one thing or the other they want to contribute to Nigeria. But I'm more particular about his performance. And um, yes, he talked to his manifesto, unlike um, some other people who are taking things in abstract. Sorry to use that language for the other presidential no, it's, candidates. It, it's fine. It's fine. But w the practical man you're talking about, Atiku Abubakar, also did say, and I give him that because he didn't lie about it, that uh, uh, he has some he has some health needs that cannot be may not be um, uh, that hospitals in Nigeria cannot uh, help him, and he might have to go out for medical uh, treatment in, every once in a while. So when he becomes a president, it means that whatever we are saying now about the present president that he goes out for medical tourism will have to continue. Or is there a plan to make sure that he that can afford medical tourism to elsewhere can go, but the ordinary man in the streets in Nigeria can also afford health care? Because when he says that, it seems now, as if there's no let plan me, let me for sit health. Down. Let me sit down. Um, the business of how and where people get their health serviced for the generation of the articles and the buaris of this world in the Bola Tenumbu inclusive 
is a function of the days that Nigerians and almost all Nigerians had enough resources and it was fashionable to have your doctors abroad. In those days, in the 70s and the early 80s, those of them who have already created medical records and they already have consultants who manage them from time to time and go for medical record, medical checks are stuck here. You cannot change the doctors of uh, people that are in their 70s or thereabouts and start another history here. It does not mean that they have not invested in the primary health care system of this country. And it does not mean that if and when they have to take some small procedure, it's not here. For your information, Articus personal physician is an Igbo man of the name Dr. Undukwe. Now, if there are referral issues here and there, that's so. Don't also forget that some of these leaders, maybe they fall down or in the course of work, they bullet it, they are, they are, they are waste like that of Obangide and Co. And at that point in time, the best hospital for such procedure is abroad that happened as a result of the civil war. You are going to now say that, okay, they are managing them and that they shouldn't look this place. If you have invited us to an interview to talk about the nation, do not mask it to mean that maybe it's an interview against one of the aspirants. If you want me to give you a bit of my views on the other two, I could. Take your darling Peter B, for instance. I say it with every sense of responsibility and emphasis that, yes, I, co I commend his courage for even trying. But Peter is very tunnel view. When you ask Peter one million questions, he's going to, one million times, give you the impression it has to do with managing um, how do you call it, you know, the frugality of spending. Now, frugality of spending is a clever language to say at corruption. Because if you are saying you are going to marry frugality of spending, it simply means that you want to track the money, you want to get the best value for the money, is a final language of saying anti corruption. Now, there's nothing wrong with fighting anti corruption, but it doesn't exactly solve all the problem. For you to build, right? and when he says, oh, I'm going, to, I'm going to stimulate production, I'm going to stimulate production, I agree. And when you look deeper, I will say, my platform for doing that is SME, SME, I accept. But he has to also understand that you have large, unemployable people in certain regions of the country, take the North, for instance. It does not matter your best interest. You cannot convert them into SME people in day one. So it's going to require a bit of a plan. The other thing you are going to see is that it's very quick to say Malaysia, Malaysia, Indonesia, Singapore, and all of that forgetting that the attitude of the people of that country and the physiology of how they behave is quite different from the Nigerians. And when he screams so much and everybody is making him seem like, oh, he's so, he's so, he's so good. We know his track record in Anambra, for instance. Everything that I saying about his, his, his performance in governance, when I look at the kind of development that has happened in Akwaipo, for instance, where Peter was not either the governor anywhere close, and I look at where Anambra is. I have to laugh at those who are thinking Peter is a genius. Peter finished in Anambra, he could have saved some money, I agree. But who was the successor? Who are the successors of the others? You, you see, let us not appropriate the entire national frustration as yeah. a reason to think that Peter is different. While Peter was the vice presidential candidate of this article campaign in 2019 and we spoke him to life. While we're, while, we're trying to, while we're trying to X-ray... Let me, let, me, let, me let me finish my thought and then you can ask the next question. The point I'm making to you is this. There are no easy solutions to the Nigerian problem. And the totality of the frustration that all of us, you feel, I feel, everybody feel, is not a perfect jacket for any of the candidates. They, will all have, they, are, they are doing the best they can. They are speaking to the issues. Akiku was magnanimous enough even during that town hall meeting, to say there was unanimity and agreement on all of them on what they need to do on policing. And don't forget, even in that town hall interview, Rabbi Musa Kankanso was quite brilliant. And yeah. he also demonstrated that he has better experience even than Peter. He has enough experience in security because he's been Minister of Defense. That means he knows what's happening there. He has experience because he's also been governor. He can possibly say, I radicalized Kano to my extent. So I'm just trying to tell you, my dear friend, that the big 
person in the room with the biggest idea who even spoke about restructuring his article. You don't get to be that big with ideas. Okay. You don't get to be that firm oh, okay. with ideas. You don't get to be that sure with ideas if you have not bounced it through so many Otumba, 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 it is, uh, it is because I had very personal questions to you because um, for you because you are a candidate of the PDP in your state but what we okay. what led what led to this is that some Nigerians got scared that somebody who should be telling us a roadmap a health roadmap for Nigerians will tell us or told us boldly that he is going to seek medical help elsewhere so what I expected was what is this roadmap, aside from the comment that everybody is now capitalizing on? What is the, road, the health roadmap for Nigeria I'll if you, he becomes I'll president? Roadmap, some of them. Atiku has always for insisted health. that, on health, I'm coming, Atiku has always insisted that there are two prong approach to almost everything, especially human capital development, which is education and health. That the, the areas where you need specialized funding to the rural areas, for primary health, let's go straight and devolve more power, that responsibility, that money to the state and the local government so they can fix their problem. To the secondary health providers, let's make the country attractive for private sector to come and, you know, do that. Because he did say, if you remember, that even the ones who go abroad, they are not going abroad to go and use government facility. They are going abroad to private facility. And that if you could attract and keep the rules and make it attractive for private people to come here, if that facility that everybody used to run to in America, some of them are running to it in Dubai, some of them are running to it in India. If we created that kind of environment in Nigeria, people will use it here. So Atiku believes that minus his own personal issues with life, the governmental direction for human capital development must be bottoms up. The one that needs to go to local government and state, okay. inform more power, Give them more money. Give them the enabling environment. The one that comes under the federal government or tertiary, look at the funding process. Remove the bottleneck that you said they should remove because you said they found out that sometimes they even allocate money and the money is just lost because of bureaucracy. And then the one that you need private sector to help you drive. Bring them in. Listen, my brother. In the year 1992-93, we lived in England. When you tell us that, oh, people are going to Dubai, we disdain it. Because uh, who's going to go to that country? Okay, okay, because okay. they took private sector to build it. Everybody goes there now. Yes. So when I think we're talking about private sector, he's not talking about selling it himself. Just, a, just a moment, Otumba. Just a moment. Um, I intend to return to you to talk more extensively about... Uh, your principal and yourself. But let's, let's give uh, uh, Mr. Babarinde a, a chance to just wrap up now. Um, his final thoughts, so that when we go on break and return, we can be talking extensively with, about you uh, or with you about other things that we need to discuss. So, Mr. Babarinde, I uh, would like to have your final thoughts from the debate and from your, your fit in next year's election. Uh, well, um, the next thing I need to tell Nigerians is the fact that um, our democracy is growing. Some, uh, some years back, we don't have this kind of opportunity to relate directly with our um, presidential candidates. And I, I really appreciate the role of the media in deepening our democracy. And um, yes, we needed more of this town hall meetings so that um, Nigerians can interact directly with uh, those who they are going to trust with their future. So that at the end of the day, we have means of analyzing them one by one and an analyzing their programs, what they intend doing and how they intend doing it, so that we won't commit another blunder as a nation. As it is now, the election is February next year, and we still have a, an ample opportunity to, to really interrogate and interact with them. Those who are shying away, from talking to us as Nigerians in Nigeria, should please find means of getting across to will be voters so that they can take a decision. But be that that is me, the media too has tried to allow us an ample opportunity of taking a decision. For those who are sitting on the fence, the moment you listen to them, 
the men to see them talking to their manifestos and how what they want to do and how they want to do it, that gives an ample opportunity to them to take a decision on who and who they're going to vote for in February next year during the presidential election. And vis-a-vis -vis the governors, Senate, rep, and other candidates like that. But for me, that town meeting was a very good one, was a fantastic one to showcase that as a leader who has been in the environment of the presidency before, who has operated as a partaker of that presidency. Elijah Tiko Abaka has shown that, look, I have what it takes vis-a-vis -vis all other candidates. But my own principal has been consistent, has been able to give us an agenda on how, where, and when, and what he will do in all sectors, if given the opportunity. And I hope Nigerians will consider him. <laughs> Okay. The next president we really need to recover Nigeria. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Babarinde. Uh, well, it's been a pleasure having you. Mr. Babarinde is a state coordinator at Tiku Support Organization in Oshun State, and he has been speaking with us and telling us the qualities that mark out his principles. So thank you so much for coming on the run-up today. Uh, the pleasure. God bless you. Okay, we will still have uh, Otumba Shegun Shomi uh, on standby. We will be talking about some other things, uh, those still related anyway, when we return from this break. Don't go away.